Welcome back, everybody, to a special episode of Stonehearth here on Additional Pylon Games. We're doing something a little bit different today, and that is we're going to be looking at the time-lapse video of the Grand Lighthouse of Guarharacho. So we can see here that we, I'm just laying out the foundation, sped this up a little bit so that we can get through this, because this was actually a, a fairly long build, um, a fairly long design plan. Um, it took me about an hour and 15 minutes-ish um, to get through all the different the different steps. Um, so just sat down and decided that I wanted to do something grand um, and build it, do a time lapse with it. So first thing that we did, as we saw there, we, we put down the foundation, the stone gray, the gray stone foundation. And from here, what I'm doing is I'm plotting out the corners, um, particularly these, um, these support structures. So the idea with these is kind of um, what you might see in medieval cathedrals. Um, so these cathedrals, the weight of the stone is so so massive, so big, that um, the, the building actually has to be supported in order to maintain its own weight. It's sort of so sort of a similar idea with this grand lighthouse. Um, referring back to the icon that's down there, it's no longer there in the series, but um, referring back to that as just kind of a, a reference point. Um, but again, just having these supports as though the Harthings knew that this would be a, a truly massive building and therefore they needed to plan the supports out um, from the beginning to make sure that the, the building had the correct um, structural foundations in order to support such a tall building. So again, just putting in a few more of these buttresses, a few more of these supports um, by the doors, and we're going to have a quick transition here in just a second. So we finished the walls, starting to put down a little bit of this slate gray, um, almost again like these um, retaining blocks there at the bottom, just to give it a little bit more character. Uh, figured out here that we can't actually put in windows into block walls, but only into the uh, the house walls or the building walls that are pre-created by the building editor. So uh, did a little experimenting there. Didn't know about that until I uh, started figuring this out. The other thing. Or what we're doing now is basically trying to figure out how we're going to do the stairs. Um, so stairs were, were one of the questions, how hard things are going to get up. I didn't want to do just ladders, so stairs were obviously a necessity. Um, turns out that the um, the stair editor, the stair tool, it only allows you to basically build stairs from the ground up. So you're not going to be able to build stairs uh, once you get to higher levels. You'd have to build them manually, so it um, kind of defeats the purpose a little bit. And the other thing we figured out is that if we put the if we put the ladder on the outside, the um, stairs around the outside, then the stairs are actually going to block. Um, they're going to block the entrances that we created. So that leaves really only one option, and that's an interior staircase, a staircase around a central pillar. Um, so you can see I've created the the start of the central pillar is there with the uh, the slate gray, uh, the gunmetal stone with these um, with this accent. Of the of the clay blocks, and basically this was kind of to give the idea that this this massive gray slate stone had been carved out of the mountain, maybe underneath, or carved uh, in a core nearby, and brought in specifically for this purpose, almost like the the mast of a of a big ship. Um, in the same way, this is the mast, um, the center pillar of this um, of this large lighthouse. So that means um, setting it up and allowing the, the stairs to get up, go around the edges. Um, I decided to go for three wide um, stairs. So stairs are, <coughs> excuse me, stairs are three blocks in width. And I would actually come to regret this a little bit later, um, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So here I am repeating the pattern a little bit and gonna skip forward a little bit just to just to kind of skip over the, the tedium of placing those same blocks over and over again. So there we go. We've repeated the pattern. We've also repeated the stairway. Um, just curling around the inside, basically. I'm going up three of those um, three of those pillar heights, I guess. Each of those pillars is 11 blocks in height, I believe. Um, 10 for the actual gunmetal stone, and then one for the, um, the layer of clay blocks that's in between. Um, from here, we just start outlining. So again, referencing the, uh, the icon image that we have there. And so my idea was to kind of just do some do some fun 
uh, with layers and so having a, a layered building in some way and so I was just kind of at this point in time still experimenting trying to see what I what I like better and you see here that the, the arch doesn't quite line up because I did the arch two different ways so fix that and again at this point still kind of just feeling it out seeing what um, just kind of see what comes to mind this this was a project that I knew I wanted to do but I didn't really have a, a specific idea in mind as far as um, look and feel so I like the way that this started out let me do a little bit another archway here above the door put a couple more blocks there and um, since we can't do windows and since this is a dry desert region um, I figured that it might look nice to leave those gaps there on the upper sides of the uh, the doorway. Um, you also see in uh, some of the other buildings for Raya's children that they have open air windows. They've got um, the even the ceilings themselves, the the roofs themselves are just open. Um, they're open blocks, open wooden beams, and so there's no fear of rain. There's no fear of like the adverse weather conditions getting in. So um, kind of reasoning that they would have this they would use the same sort of idea for creating this grand lighthouse um, and even maybe even on a greater scale having these greater open areas so that any fire that's within could could emanate out from from the actual lighthouse itself so i i really started i actually i liked my initial design i liked the first design and so i've decided to just go with it we've got this this tiered this layered um you know these layered pointed uh, edges here on the base and going with that um, yeah also I think that it it lends itself to a little bit more um, it's a little more interesting than just having flat walls um, which is again is something that we'll actually run into here in a little bit um, decided the other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to make put different color gems over top of each of the, the doorways. So you got light blue and dark blue on each of the sides. You've got red facing the town. And then this last one is going to have a, a, a very light gray um, gem over the door. Kind of just give it a little bit of character, give it a little bit of um, asymmetry, just in some small ways to try and um, you know break it up a little bit. There we go. So there's the initial outset of it. Just kind of inspecting my work a little bit and seeing what the next step is for this and we go on actually to do the same uh same repeat the same pattern with gunmetal the dark metal the dark stone um and repeat that same pattern behind the burnt orange there but once we've completed that again referencing back to that icon but once i completed that i started to realize that the um the width of the stairs on the inside is actually prohibitive from having to continue on having this tiered effect and so it was kind of this um, this sad realization that if I wanted to continue the height of the, the lighthouse I'd have to do so with at least beginning with a square foundation um, so this this created some problems it also created some opportunities um, you know just but it's also something to keep in mind for next time that if I am going to include a big staircase, I need to take into account that that's going to restrict how small the walls can be. Um, if I were to do it again, I would probably make the base of the of the lighthouse a little bit wider, so that way we could continue to have that tiered pyramid effect um, on the lower layers, continue up a little bit higher. Um, so as we'll see here in a few minutes, one of the main challenges was integrating the the upper and lower portions to make them look like they were actually a, the part part of the same building um, we're putting in these walls up here we've got um, you can see we've got this very interesting very um, different kind of design for the lower half and then just a very bland kind of blah design for the top part and again this is kind of one of the issues with just having a, a, a design that wasn't fully formed um, to begin with so one of the things that I started to do and you can see here is just taking these um, Taking these initial pillars on the middle um, with the gunmetal and then the burnt orange and finally the, the light ash and just extending them up a little bit. So by having them extend up a little bit, it almost seems like these these bottom supports are um, they're fused or they're supporting this this upper structure as well. So that helps a little bit, but we're going to continue uh, working on that as we keep going. So I wanted to again take these um, take these scaffolding 
take this um the support pillars and really emphasize that this is a grand building so i decided to go back and actually put in more of these supports uh, more of these buttresses just again reinforce the idea that this is a massive this is a very big and truly um, large scale project it's very heavy it's very um it's very grand and in order to support its weight it's almost like the um the foundations of the of the building need to be they need to be clawing themselves into the um the actual the mountain itself so continue those buttresses up a little bit on the inside make the doorways just a, just a tad smaller um but from there i'm i'm really pretty much set with the bottom of the piece it's this top part that we need to figure out so the first thing that i decided to do is again continue the these um these gunmetal pillars all the way up kind of encasing the top part and giving it a little bit of dimension one of the best ways to build uh, buildings with a little more dimension is to build the walls so that they're two two blocks thick at least sometimes three and making them so that you can then carve in and out um, adding blocks and subtracting blocks from the width of it to make it a little more interesting the other thing i decided to do was was maybe to have these um these pillars have some wings come off the, the sides and so i decided to experiment a little bit with that and then my last idea was um again you've got this idea of these hearthlings where they're creating um structures where they're not afraid to have it open air and so we can't since we can't have windows one another good way to make a make the space a little bit more interesting is to carve out some of the sides carve out some of the, the spots where you've got blocks and make your own makeshift windows uh, decorative almost um i don't know kind of just a, a version of almost a version of stained glass but instead of glass itself having just open air um so that was my thought again it, it makes it a little more interesting it ties in the top and the bottom a little bit better just because you have um again open spaces on top open spaces on the bottom um so i decided to do a different pattern for the top and bottom rows um continued that on and then I'm fighting with the camera a little bit here but the other thing that i noticed is that when you look at this design you've got these gaps between the the bottom corners and the um the open areas there of the diamond shapes on the bottom and stepping back it almost looked like eye sockets um it was just a little strange to me and so i decided to go back in repeat the pattern a little bit and close those gaps up just to make um once again it seemed more cohesive also the um adding that next layer in really seemed to make it look like the the bottom was supporting the top part so that was um another added bonus but you can see there it's almost like you've got those eye sockets on the sides you've got the, the light ash acting as like a nose or a beard uh, of a face coming down with the uh the colored noses there um, added some platforms to the lower edges the lower sides of the lighthouse and then decided to um i wasn't happy with the way that this design was coming out and so i wanted to actually take that center pillar and extend it up one more section and give it some some um basically repeating that same pattern and have it so that the the actual light of the lighthouse would be found here at the top of this rather than at the top of the platform where we were at previously again going back to that reference image and that reference image actually has a gray top rather than a red or a, a, an ash top so using that gray top almost again as though there's a big stone bowl that's up top that's actually holding in this this fire so decided to had to fight a little bit with the camera uh, which is a little bit difficult when you're up this high but again taking those um those clay blocks and putting them in the corners making it seem like the uh the blocks themselves were integrated so that you have this entire stone structure um carved out of one piece maybe the other thing i decided to do is trying to to integrate the same pattern that we had on the bottom here at the top to just connect um visually visually connect the the top and the bottom layers of the lighthouse so this will be the the great stone brazier and this will eventually we'll put in some some fire pits up here or something like that um some tower braziers to act as um kind of makeshift um fire pits makeshift torches to act as the brazier here so again having that same uh repeating pattern we have one layer that's a little bit lower in front of a different color 
here behind it. So there we are. So that's the, the central part of it. Um, at this point, it's looking pretty good. Um, the, the main thing now is, again, to, to try and come up with this idea of giving the uh, these upper areas a little more dimension. And so I had experimented a little bit with um, some overhangs, almost like a diving boards, giant diving boards coming off the edges. So I decided to experiment a little bit more with that. So give some, some that burnt orange um, blocks there on the sides and then start expanding that a little bit to make it look like, um, give us access, give us the ability to put some more lanterns, put some more, um, you know, put some more fire pits down, something like that. And this is where I, I went searching actually to find some fire pits where I could, I could place them. And I later figured out, um, and you'll see this a little bit, I later figured out that I can't actually use them, I can't actually place them, until your mason is able to actually build them. Um, my mason at this time was like a level 3 mason or something like that, level 4 mason maybe. So I wasn't able to make tower braziers, I wasn't able to make fire pits with the mason, which meant um, I wasn't able to actually preview the, the, these side offshoots um, with those. So, went back and eventually placed some tower braziers, but for now, it's just kind of bare. So this, the last thing that I really worked on was this top area, is getting that figured out. I, I wasn't really happy with how it looked. It looked a little plain, it looked a little um, bland. So trying a bunch of different things with that. So the first thing I noticed is that this, this central pillar is actually pretty bland itself. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to do was just give it a little pattern there. Um, and so the way I decided to do it was to make it, again, just seem vertical, but at the same time, we've got all these open holes, all these open areas in the lower parts of the, of the lighthouse. And so integrating that central ring there in the middle just makes it seem like there's, there's an openness to it, again, repeating that open air concept um, at the top of the lighthouse as well as at the bottom. So there I am, searching again for different lanterns and... Um, here I go, and I realize that my mason actually can't build them, which is why they're not appearing in my little build uh, cube. So put some regular stone braziers down there on the bottom so we get a little bit of light from the great lighthouse down at the bottom. Um, we'll put lights up at the top later on. But this is where I go back actually to the foundation and revise it a little bit. So again, because this tower is so massive, because it's such a huge lighthouse, I really wanted to make it seem like the building itself, the foundations itself, had to be just carved and dug and clawed into the mountain. And one way to do that is to just visually, is basically to take out the blocks um, by the by the footings, make it seem like those footings continue down into the stone. So I got rid of those and then put in that light ash, replaced it, and I think um, along with another addition that I'm actually working on uh, currently. Um, I think that this will really make it stand out, make it seem like this. Um, these buttresses had to be just carved out of stone, placed into the placed into the rock, and, and really melted there, uh, melded there. So it makes the it makes the bottom feel um, a little busy, but at the same time, it also makes it feel like uh, almost hard things knew that it was going to be a build, big building, but they didn't realize how big it was going to be, how heavy and massive it was going to be, and so they had to come back with more of these flying buttresses, these supports, to actually support it. I know they're they're not technically flying buttresses. Um, those, are, those are much taller and they're separated from the building, but you get the idea. So, kind of just doing a quick save, um, make sure <laughs> that I don't lose my hard work, um, and then a quick transition to basically the finished product here in just a second. And so you can see here that I, I decided to give a little bit more color, a little bit more um, depth to this top area, just exposing that gunmetal um, and getting it so that it's a little bit more interesting. But that's basically it. So that is the Grand Lighthouse. And I hope you appreciate this time lapse. Hit like and subscribe if you want to see more. Check out some of the other series going on on the channel. And leave a comment below if you have any tips, any suggestions, or anything like that. So thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time here on Additional Power of Games.